What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm super excited because I'm bringing you the Altergeist deck profile post Brothers of Legend that now includes Pukri. Super excited for this card, super excited to play this deck and I want to say if you guys do enjoy this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. One more thing I do want to say though is check out the merch. This is the Get Your Game On hoodie. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. Get your game on hoodie. This is one. This is so soft, bro. Like I just got it in, and I, I freaking love it. It's so comfortable. But one thing I do want to say is a lot of people have been asking me, Yo Spanko, where's your merch? Yo Spanko, where's where's the hoodies? Where's the t-shirts? Where's this? Everything is going to be linked in the description below. I have a brand new Teespring store where you guys can get a bunch of Spanko merch. This is just to get your game on, but I have a bunch of other designs. You can get t-shirts, hoodies. Uh, what else? Crew necks, uh, bags, everything. There's a lot of stuff over there. So if you guys want to check it out and help support the channel, and obviously you guys can be pulling up to locals looking the most fire. The most fire. I hope you guys do enjoy this video. That's just all the plugging I want to do for today. So uh, yeah, let's just get into the deck profile. Okay, so to start things off here, I'm super excited to be showing you guys this list. And we are starting off with one Altergeist Pukri. Now, I do want to say you only play one because if you guys haven't checked out the combo video, it'll make a little bit more sense. But just to explain, one Pukri is only really good because it's really good in your hand, yes, but you really want to search it for most of your combos. On top of that, it's not a starter on its own. You always need something paired with it, which is why you only want to be playing one Pukri. Because, for example, opening Pukri in four traps is not that great. Whereas, let's say you open and marionette in four traps that's like playable you know what i mean so that's why one pukri is enough but this is all you need and it changes the deck so so much so much combo potential now with this deck which is weird because it's altergeist and it's really cool because it adds another aspect to the deck that we didn't have access to before the best part about it is that now if you want to play a more slowy grind game of course you still can because at the end of the day you're playing a trap deck a grindy deck however if you want to push for damage really fast pukri lets you do that now as well and then the rest of the altergeist stuff is is the standard stuff so triple faker triple mila seek triple marionette double silquitous and one conquery so that is it for the altergeist lineup i think this is pretty standard all of this lineup that you see here is the standard lineup that i've been playing before and most altergeist players i believe play this standard lineup but the addition of the one pukri just gives so much potential the nice thing about pukri is you can really open it with any other combo and it becomes really really good even something like a dead silquitous in your hand you can just normal summon your silquitous use the pukri and then make it into a hextia so that's why this card is just so insane because a lot of the time when you you draw stuff like Silquidus, you're always thinking to yourself, wow, like I, I didn't want, this is the one Altergeist I didn't want to draw, kind of sucks, whatever, whatever. But again, because of the Pukri now, you can do cool combos like that now. So getting Faker off first turn as well. Again, if you guys want to check out the combo video, a link will be in the description below. It'll explain to you what I mean because you guys will see it in action. But the best part about this is literally you open Pukri with any other Altergeist, I guess outside of Conquery, and you have plays going for you. Now for our hand trap lineup, we are only actually playing just the Ash for our hand traps. However, one thing that I love playing is double Gamma Seal in the main deck. Now, what Gamma Seal lets you do is it lets you out so many things going second. This deck has always had a problem going second. Now, it's not that bad, but you always do seem to struggle with big boss monsters. So if your opponent puts up a DPE, which is really relevant in the format right now, if your opponent puts up a Dragoon, if your opponent puts up just a big boss monster that's really hard to out, Gamma Seal always is just, hey, here's a free out, right? Sometimes with those cards, it's also hard to out with a Mila Seek because they'll have some sort of protection within themselves or DPE, for example, will just pop the Mila Seek before you get the Mila Seek send. So that's why Mila Seek is really good, but it's not always dependable. Whereas something like Gamma Seal is just, hey, you have a big boss monster, I can't out it, boom, here you go. At one point, I even considered playing triple Gamma Seal and two Ash, but uh, I think this ratio is just a little bit better. Ash is also really good because against a lot of the rogue matchups or just random matchups, this obviously is just sometimes just way, way better because it's just more generic. However, against a Sky Striker matchup, funny enough, you do want to play the Gamma Seals. I even side in a third Gamma Seal for the Sky Striker matchup because if you just hit them with a Gamma Seal, you're just winning the game at that point. They're going to be stuck on a card. They can't really get rid of this unless they have a, like a Ray and they can link two into like a Phoenix or something but otherwise they have to use so many cards to out the gamma seal so this card is actually really good against a lot of matchups funny enough a lot of random matchups but yeah this is a lineup i'm playing i think this is all you need and it's really working well for me so for our spell cards we are actually only playing three spells and that is triple pod of extravagance we're not playing duality anymore again because of the addition with pukuri 
you do want to be special summoning on your turn. So duality is actually not that great anymore. And the deck is also really, really consistent already. But I do like to play extravagance even over something like prosperity because getting extra cards in your hand is always better. Prosperity is a really good one for one. But because the deck is already so consistent, I would rather just draw multiple traps, right? Or like draw like a faker in a trap or something like that with the extravagance. Whereas prosperity is like you're going to be adding one card to your hand. On top of that, your opponent is going to know what you're going to be adding to your hand. So in a deck like Altergeist, where you really want to snowball, you really don't want your opponent knowing what they're playing into because that's the best part about trap decks right you set four cards they don't know what those four cards are but as soon as they know one or two of them they can start to play around it so part of extravagance only spell card you're playing the only one you need so for the trap cards you guys can see we're playing a lot of trap cards over here so we're going to start things off with triple personal spoofing now personal spoofing of course is really good for its own reasons everyone knows how good this card is but you have to be playing triple and i'm going to explain why a little bit later but you triple is really important Double protocol, I want to up this to three, but I am only playing it at two. I think it's searchable when you need it. It also, you can add it back with the Silquitus in the mid to late game. So I think two is fine as well as one manifestation. Again, searchable, you only really get it when you need it. It actually is a little bit better turn one now because you can have the Pukri and you can make the Hextia. So this is actually a little bit better than it was before turn one, but still not always the best, right? And we are playing one Haunted Rock. One card that a lot of people stopped playing, myself included, but recently added back into the deck. So I'm not going to lie to you, Haunted Rock is kind of a brick. This deck is 41 cards in the main deck it's not 40 it's 41 and this was the 41st card now the reason i'm playing this is because with pukri now there's so many combos where you can set this with your marionette and then send let's say like a multi faker from your hand then you can marionette pop this summon back the multi faker then with use the multi faker effect summon the mila seek then go mila seek and then multi faker into hextia mila seek can search you a pukri then you can use pukri and your marionette into a second hextia so that's just just a combo like if you guys want to watch the combo video it'll be more in depth but i just wanted to explain that quick so with pukri i think haunted rock is really really good and again the reason why i wanted to bring up personal spoof is because if you do draw into this which does suck of course you never really want to draw into this but if you do draw into it you do have personal spoofing to put it back into your deck which is really important okay on top of that if you do open something like a marionette plus a faker and let's say like any other altergeist card you can set this off the marionette flip it you can pitch any other altergeist card but you can also summon the faker from your hand because you're activating a trap card so this card does provide a lot of combo potential for the deck and it makes the ceiling of this deck so so high i love this card now and then for the trap cards you are playing just really generically the best trap cards in the game right now triple imperm triple torrential tribute uh triple solemn judgment judgment is really important because you don't want to get blown out by something like a red reboot or something like a lightning storm so triple solemn judgment is really important triple solemn strike i mean this is just one of the best cards going first and going second solemn strike is insane and of course we're only playing extrav so imperial order is honestly just a, such a blowout card against so many decks and that's why we're playing imperial order this is our trap lineup i think it's perfect i don't think i would change anything else at all i know some people have asked me why don't you play idp idp is not really good with the alter guy stuff because if you guys don't know faker's effect locks you into special summoning alter guys monsters so with idp if you use idp you can't use faker because like let's say you'll idp summon back from their graveyard then you can't really faker to summon from your deck right so yeah it's just weird uh, weird interaction on top of that i do want to mention one more thing and i guess i should have mentioned this earlier with the monster lineup but people ask me why you don't play heavenly prison the new card from burst of destiny so the reason for that is because one you're playing a high monster count in alter guys in itself so that card is not really great it's really good in more like stun decks and on top of that like it, it really breaks your hands a lot of time and so you don't really need it but that's just something i wanted to mention real quick because i have gotten comments on that in the past and i just wanted to mention that briefly so just before we get into our extra deck here, I want you guys to check out yourplaymat.com. If you guys use my code, you guys can get 10% off any custom playmat, any custom sleeves. Here are the custom Spanko sleeves, which are available on the website if you guys want your own Spanko YGO sleeves. But if you guys want your own custom designs and you guys want 10% off, make sure to check out yourplaymat.com. Use my code, it'll be in the description. It'll also be on the screen probably somewhere. And you guys can get 10% off your orders. So if you guys wanted to check that out, make sure to check it out, help support the channel, and you get your own custom merch. Your own custom merch. Sounds good, doesn't it? So for the extra deck, we are starting off, of course, with Triple Hextia. Now, oh my god, like Hextia is so good, and everyone knows how good this card is, but because of Pukri, you literally can make double Hextia turn one. And it's just so strong because now your opponent is going to have to deal with like three back row, 
plus Hextias, it's so good. So obviously you do want to play triple Hextia, of course. Now, this is the one thing that I want to talk about. So I'm playing two of the new memory gain, okay? So this card is really, really good. Now, in testing, I was testing one memory gain and one prime Banshee, okay? I'm not playing prime Banshee right now. I'm, pl I'm playing two memory gain, but I was trying one and one. So prime Banshee is really good because sometimes with your Pukri, it's really good to just use Hextia plus Pukri into like a prime Banshee because that's the way you get the Hextia effect off. Just if you need something to search or you need something in the moment. So that's why I was playing the prime Banshee. However, I stopped because I am playing Extravagance and Memory Gain is really, really good because if you guys don't know what this card does, I'll put it right here so you guys can read it real quick. But this card is really good in the mid to late game because it can help you push for game and OTK. This card pretty much replaces stuff like Boral Sword. It's just one of those things that it helps you OTK so much quicker and so much easier. And it's an Altergeist name. So it makes it really easy to summon even after you use your Multi Faker, which locks you into Altergeist cards, right? So that's why this card is really, really good and really, really important. And that's why I decided to play two of it just because I'm playing Extrav. And if I banish one, it's okay. I'll have a second one. But again, if you guys want to try one memory, one prime Banshee, that works as well. I just, in testing, I preferred this and it would just worked out a lot more for me just because of the odd situation where if you're only playing one and you banish the one, you're kind of stuck making weird plays because now you can't push for a game. But this card lets you now push for a game, which is really good. That's why I think Altergeist is literally tier one right now. And people don't even see it coming because you're playing a slow, grindy trap deck. And then out of nowhere, boom, you can OTK. Before the problem with Altergeist is you're really doing chip damage one at a time. Now you're just literally like, hey, I'm gonna blow you out. So that's why this card is really, really good. Then for the rest of the extra deck, it is pretty standard stuff. You are playing Triple, Link, Karibo, and Wall and Almirage, of course, just to link it off with your uh, Milaseek. These cards are really, really good. You can also technically make Almirage with Pukri. I mean, there's no real situation where you would do that, but I'm just saying you could. So then there's that. There's one Anima. Anima is really good for going second, and it helps you also with the Gamma Seals in the main deck. You can Gamma Seal your opponent and then make an Anima and then take that Gamma Seal. So Anima is really, really good. Then you're just playing one Phoenix, one Unicorn. These are just more filler spots, but also just more toolbox stuff. So one Phoenix, one Unicorn over here. We're playing one IP Masquerina. This comes up actually pretty often, so I like to play this. Playing one Access Code Talker, and then I'm also playing one of the Underworld Goddess. Now this card is insane. Turns three, turns four. Sometimes you can literally break your opponent's board just with an Underworld Goddess. So I really, really like this card. It doesn't come up super often, I won't lie, but when this card does come up, it just helps you auto win games. So that's why I really like the Underworld Goddess. Also with the addition of Pukri now, putting extra bodies on the board is actually not that difficult. So if you can make something, like if you have a Hextia plus two monsters and then your opponent has a monster, boom, you just make Underworld Goddess and, and you're literally breaking the board and you're putting up a big beater on the field, right? Plus you're getting Hextia effect off. So it's really, really good in that sense. That's it for the extra deck. It is a 15 card extra deck. Now I know some people are gonna ask for a side deck. I'm gonna show you guys my side deck real quick. But I do want to say this, only use this as a template. The reason for that is because everyone's side deck should depend on what their locals is like. I know some people's locals play more back row heavy decks, some people's locals play more combo decks. And so it really just depends on what your locals is and you can adjust your side deck to there. My locals usually consist of a lot of back row heavy decks and a lot of decks that make DPE. So whether that be hero, whether that be PK. So that's really what my locals is looking right now. Right now. So like here, I'm just gonna spread this out for you guys to see. Uh, I don't see too much sword soul in my locals, which is kind of nice, but that's why I'm playing stuff like a third Gamma Seal for like the DPE for the Dragoon and whatnot. I'm playing a Pancratops for going second. And again, like I said, they'd like to play a lot of back row. So here's Harpy's Feather Duster with two Cosmic Cyclones. And then here, of course, you have something like Chalice, which helps you break opponent's boards. You have evenly matched for back row matchups. And then you have this for uh, the odd striker or whatnot when you're going first. So again, this is not like something I want to show you guys. This is what you need to play in your side deck. But again, a side deck always just depends on what your locals is. Some people's locals like to play a lot of combo decks. So if that's the case, play Nibiru, right? Something like that. I'm not playing Nibiru in here because again, my locals doesn't like to play too much combo. So again, it's all dependent. I don't want to show you guys something and you guys are like, I have to play it this way or else I can't like, you know, win. I have to do what he says. Like, I don't want you to think it that way. This is really just a template. But again, just always depends on what your locals is like. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. This is the new Altergeist Pulse Brothers of Legend deck profile. It's been working out for me so, so well. And if you guys didn't check out the combo video, make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description there below as well. And again, like I said, if you guys want to get your merch looking nice and fire, link will be in the description as well. If you guys enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, do all that, you know, YouTube -y stuff. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.